So now I'm going to talk about measure using a vector. To make it a little easier, a little clearer, I'm going to go ahead and hide the arc. And I'm just going to measure from line to the spline. And I'm just going to click out in the background to get the menu to pop up. Select my measure icon. And now I'm going to specify the two objects that I want to measure from. Now remember, the menu is going to remember the last set of objects you have selected. So right now, I don't have associative turned on. I have object picked, and I'm going to pick this line, there's object one, to this spline, object two. Again, there's my minimum distance, maximum, perpendicular, et cetera, et cetera. Now, at this point, I'm going to add in a vector to my measurement. You can use the constructor, you can use a line defining a vector, maybe you have a tooling axis, whatever that is. Pick something that gives you the axis. So if you have a tooling direction, maybe it's a slide direction, whatever that is, pick it. Once I pick it, the measurement changes, and it changes profoundly. Notice along a vector, I have several different measurement types. So the first one is minimum projected. So what it's doing is basically along this direction, what are the two nearest points? Maximum. Along the y direction, what are the two furthest points? Minimum project contact. So if I were to take that line and just move it along the y direction, where would it touch that spline? The first place that it would touch. That's the spot. I have maximum projected contact. Okay, where is the last place maximum distance? You know, it might look like it's over here, but it really isn't. Remember, this distance here is less than this distance. So the maximum distance, basically, again, if I move this line, where is the last point that it would touch? Move it in the Y direction. What is the last point? That would be the last point it touches. That's the maximum distance. Minimum projected orthogonal. Okay. And then you have maximum projected orthogonal. Now, the minimum projected orthogonal versus the uh, minimum uh, projected standard, very, very di uh, little differences. So that's why I just kind of marched to the maximum projected orthogonal. Now, in this case, it's taking the y direction and determining the two furthest points away in an uh, orthographic, right? So basically along the y direction. So along the y direction, this point, and this point are the two points furthest away from each other. So every other point is closer than that. Now, if I switch that back to the minimum projected, this is the minimum projected orthogonal, right to, the, right to that point. It's kind of hard to see it, so that's why I went to the maximum, just so you could see what it's doing. Okay, so now I'm picking the measure with a vector. Now, I'm not gonna keep the measurement, but you'll notice that it says vector up here. I don't have associative turned on, so I'm gonna select okay. And now I've got this, let me hit refresh. Okay, what is this going on here? Why am I seeing this? If I double click on it, I'm going into that. Double click onto that line. Why am I seeing these things? Well, remember, I when I did the measurement, remember it, it remembers it because I selected okay. I said display annotation and create geometry. Now, if I look up here, this is non-timestamp geometry. It's not associative. Okay. That means the line was generated. There's no history to the line. It's a temporary thing. I can delete this without affecting the measure. Okay. Something else that happened, I have this, uh, basically it's PMI. Now, again, it's not associated to anything. It's temporary. So if I want it, I can just delete it. So maybe you want to display it for whatever purposes. I'm going to undo that for a moment, right? So if I double click on it, what you'll see is it goes into the attributes. If I right mouse click on this, I can say display as PMI. I can go into whatever views I want to put on. So it's like a, basically as a PMI. Okay. Now, again, there's no, let me delete that. There's no associativity there. So that's why I got that. So now I'm going to go back into the measure tool. And... When I perform my measurement, now I'm going to screw up. This is an, an intentional mess up. 
The intentional mess up is notice what object is left to measure or selected to measure, vector. So the menu remembers the last time you selected OK. All right. So if I start picking things, that's going to add that in as a vector. Is that a vector? No, it's not. So, you know, people will go through, why isn't it giving me the measure that I want? Well, check your object to measure. So I'm going to go back to object. Now I'm going to measure from the line to the spline. And leave a minimum distance. This time I'm going to turn off display annotation, turn off the create geometry. I don't want to see any of that stuff. I don't need to worry. Ah, you know what? I'll put it on a vector just to show you what will happen. Okay, I'm going like that. And then now I'm going to select OK. So it didn't keep anything. There's no object in the tree that appeared, non-timestamp, the, the measure didn't appear magically. Now, but when I go back into the menu, again, it remembers those settings. Had I hit cancel, it would have just uh, reset the menu back to its original. Again, vectors back up here at the top. So again, this is another area that I'm gonna beat up in these series of lectures because it's something that a lot of people, and myself included, uh, once I got used to it, I, I really don't do it that much anymore, but it's something that a lot of people do tend to do a rinse repeat on, kind of forget. So I'm going to make sure I talk about this quite often.